Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we are looking at the Swagman XC2 bike rack here on our 2009 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Now the XC2 is a really good bike rack if you are looking for something that has the bare necessities and you're not interested in the extra features that you probably don't even need or want for your trip. Now we have this here on our Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. You can see we have a spare tire and this is one of the few bike racks that comes out enough just to clear it. Although if you do have a different style of bike, you may need a hitch extender just to get that extra extension to clear that tire. Now let's take a look at the way our bike is mounted to this bike rack. So we have two wheel hoops, one in the front, one in the back, and then the thing that's really holding it into place is our frame mount here. So when you wanna take off your bike, what you need to do is just press this button and then lift up on the clamp what, or on the hook. What I like to do is just take them off completely. Make sure to hold on to your bike as you do so. And then you can just put them to the side on the ground. I like to just put them around the loops. And from here, you can take off your bike. Another step I like to do is to actually take off the mask completely. So I pull that pin out and then I push this down. And from here, it's just a slight lift and then you are ready to go on a bike ride. With this, with this bike out of the way, let's take a closer look at the bike rack itself. We have these hoops and these can be adjusted back and forth to accommodate different wheelbases. The maximum wheelbase this can fit is a wheelbase of 52 inches, which is pretty long. You then use these knobs just to hold them into place and to tighten them down. Here in the middle, we have our mast. So this comes up and is secured by that pin. Let's put these hooks back into place. And this is gonna be what's holding your bike into place. So this ratchets down to secure your bike's frame. If you do have bikes like a women's bike, a children's bike, or a step-through bike, you may need to get a frame adapter bar in order to hold those frames into place. All right, right, let's get that into position like that. This can accommodate bike weights of up to 35 pounds. So 35 pounds for each bike, total of 70 pounds. If you do have your heavier bikes, this may not be the best fit for you, but for your average bike, this will work really well. Now let's take some measurements here behind our vehicle. The length added to the back of our vehicle, measuring from our bumper to the end of that hoop is 22 inches. Now this of course depends on where your hitch is, but that's the length to keep in mind when you're trying to back into your garage or park into a tight spot. Let's also talk about ground clearance. We do have a shank rise, so measuring from underneath the tray, it sits at 20 and a half inches. Measuring from underneath the shank, it sits at 17 and a quarter inches. Notice as well as how this fits around our spare tire, giving us a little bit extra room. So let's talk about, a about that a little bit as I pack this bike rack up. This does not tilt away, but it folds up. And to do so, you have to take out this pin and then fold it up like that. You can see how the wheel hoops come up. You may need to get a, figure out the best fit right there with your mask. Then you use that pin to hold it into place. So one, two, and you may need to move this around just to get that hole lined up right there. You can also do the same for the other side. Pull that pin out, bring that up, and secure it. Okay, so I have the knobs in my way a little bit. So that's something about this rack. You have some adjustability, but may, what may also happen is that you may need to figure out the best fit for your situation. All right. So with those hoops in over there, gonna secure that, bring this in, and that should give us a little extra to secure it with this pin. All right, 
So I'm going to fix that right here. So with this in place, you will see how their, our bike rack is folded up with that folded up position. Once you do get that pin into place, it is a little bit of a struggle at first, but that's just something you're going to have to work with as you address different factors right there. All right. So with our spare tire, we have very limited clearance, especially with this sticking out like this. I measured from the center of the hitch pin hole all the way to the end of the tire. That's how much of a clearance you're going to have to get with your bike rack. I needed to clear about nine inches. So you can see here it comes really close. So if you do have a longer bike rack, especially with maybe longer pedals or non clipless pedals, you will find that this does come in contact with that tire and you may be interested in a hitch extension just to get a little extra um, length to your hitch. Now that will reduce your tongue weight by 50%. So just keep that in mind, especially if you are working with heavier bikes. Now let's talk about how this fits into our hitch. So this has an inch and a quarter and a two inch sleeve. So if you do have an inch and a quarter hitch, it works for class two hitches only and then for two inch hitches like what we have here. This comes with an anti-rattle bolt as well as this clip to secure it. It also comes with a tool to tighten it down, but I highly recommend picking up the performance tool or a socket wrench that has a three quarter socket because that will make life a lot easier when tightening it down. But when you do have that anti-rattle bolt in place, that will take up most of your sway action here. So as you do go on the road and you have those shakes and that sway, so like you see here as I shake our bike rack, I'm mainly shaking the vehicle at this point, meaning you have a bit of a smoother ride for your bikes on the bike rack. All right, so my final thoughts about this bike rack on this vehicle is this is one of the few that will fit around your spare tire. We still don't have that much of a clearance around our tire, so that's something you're gonna have to think about. You may have to put your bike on the furthest hoop as compared to the closer hoop, or you may need to get a hitch extension. If you do get a hitch extension, you may want to think about how much your tongue weight capacity is decreased by, as well as other bike racks that you might prefer if you want the extra features. But all in all, this is a really good basic necessity kind of bike rack. It gets the job done and it has pretty much all you need to carry your bike. So that was a look at the Swagman XC2 on our 2009 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.